following course, Cybersecurity Best Practices for Field Service Engineers, is intended for all technicians who commission industrial control systems at customer sites or maintain systems installed at those sites. This course is intended to educate you on the cybersecurity challenges you face when working in customer environments and give you proper do's and don'ts on how to interact and work with those systems. The purpose for providing this list of do's and don'ts is to help make sure that as you visit customer sites and represent your company and its values, you don't make any mistakes, you don't raise any issues, and you don't pose a security threat to either your customer or your company's environment. Key takeaways from this training would be to understand what those risks are, learn how to follow proper procedures when interacting with these systems, and ensure that you are transparent, sharing information with both your management and your customer. Here we have a summary of the do's and don'ts regarding how to make sure you're protecting your customers' environments. Some examples include make sure you don't use an insecure computer, don't misuse read-write media, don't leave any equipment behind without expressed approval, and don't connect to the customer's network without approval. Then some positive actions you can perform include check to make sure the customer system is not internet-facing and without protection, educate your customer on proper credential management, Use secure connections when accessing your customer's system remotely. Review and document the installed system version levels. And note and report any anomalies. Share any findings with both your management and your customer for remediation. It's very important to make sure you do not bring an insecure computer to a customer site. You want to ensure that you do not introduce any malware or viruses into your customer's environment. First thing you want to do is check your system before you leave your home office. Make sure that the operating system is patched to the latest levels. Check that the antivirus is up to date. Check that the computer has been scanned and confirm that the computer's personal firewall has been turned on. There's a very simple way to check these as you see on the screen here. There's a pop-up to check that the antivirus version is current. Then make sure it has recently been scanned, it is operational, and is protecting the computer. When you leave the customer site, make sure you rescan the computer to ensure that no malware was received while you were on the customer's network. If possible, and this is the ideal situation, do not even use your own computer. Try to use the customer's assets in their environment to avoid any risk of introducing or receiving any malware or viruses. One of the easiest, and unfortunately, one of the most convenient ways of sharing malware between systems is using read-write media that has not been properly scanned. Tools like USB sticks, while very convenient for exchanging files, also creates an opportunity for malware and viruses to be transferred between systems. If you must use these to perform your job, make sure that you have explicit permission beforehand and you've scanned all the media you might be using including CDs, DVDs, and USBs. If you are handed any media, do not trust it until it has been scanned to make sure it is clean of any malware or viruses. If you're going to use any of these read-write media across multiple customer sites, make sure you reformat it between every reuse. Proper handling of read-write media will dramatically reduce the risk of introducing malware either into the customer system or your own company's network. If you intend to be at a customer site for more than the day, make sure that any computer hardware or utilities that you brought with you are removed from the customer network, even if just for overnight. If you do need to leave something behind, in some cases you're using equipment that must be run overnight, obtain explicit approval from the customer and your management, making sure that the systems are secured before you leave the facility. This way, nobody can take advantage of the equipment or get access to the system without your expressed approval. Also, make sure that company data is not exposed by leaving anything unsecured. Make sure no laptops or media with company documents, including your company's intellectual property, are left behind. These simple steps will ensure that no problems result from the equipment being left in the customer environment. Make sure you do not connect to a customer's network without prior approval. It's important that they understand what you're doing, they accept the purpose of your connection, and they realize what systems are going to be showing up on their logs that correlate to the work that you are performing. As part of the approval, make sure they understand how long you'll be connected, what actions you intend to perform, and when you plan to disconnect. If, in the course of the actions that you perform, you have to deviate from this original plan, make sure you document that and provide that to the customer so they understand what actually transpired. 
One of the areas where you could really provide benefit to your customer is in helping them reduce risk from open internet connections. You should start with reviewing with them their network architecture, making sure that, at a minimum, their system is installed behind a firewall. If the customer isn't sure, you should suggest they engage with their IT department or network admin in order to confirm the actual system architecture. One thing they should be sensitized to is that if their IP address is visible, tools like Shodan will find them. Malicious actors use similar tools to find systems that are directly connected to the internet and use that as a point of attack. If in your investigation you have any concerns, report that to the customer's management and to your management as well. The next area where you could really help your customer is educating them about the importance of securing the credentials to access their systems. We know that many systems ship with default credentials, which allows commissioning to easily take place since the credentials are known and documented. However, once commissioned, it's very important to change those credentials because malicious actors can find them published on the internet. Additionally, it's important that those credentials are changed regularly, so any leakage of user credential information won't be usable for any length of time. If you do have concerns, make sure you report that to your customer's management as well as your company. One area that's very important is how you connect to your customer's systems when performing remote maintenance. It is certainly more efficient and cost effective to be able to remotely connect to a system, make modifications, and then disconnect from that system. This avoids the cost and time of driving out to the customer site. However, it's very important that those connections are secure using a technology like VPN or virtual private network. A VPN connection will make sure that the connection is authenticated and the data being transferred is encrypted. Common protocols like FTP and Telnet must be avoided at all costs. These protocols are considered to be highly insecure and create a serious attack vector for malicious actors. If a secure connection is not available for you to leverage, document the concern and make sure that your management and the customer understand the implications of an insecure remote connection. Another action that can be beneficial for your customer is to review all the installed software and firmware versions to make sure they are patched and up to date. In many cases, security patches have been released, yet the customer might not be aware of them. However, there is one caution. You should make sure you have written consent of the customer before you patch any systems, in case there are problems with the deployment of that patch version. While you're at the customer site, you might see data traffic as a part of your regular troubleshooting and maintenance activities. With your experience, you might recognize abnormal traffic or unusual login patterns. Should you see anything that looks suspicious, make sure you document and report it to your management immediately. However, do not disrupt or reset the system, because in the event of an active cyber incident, evidence could be disturbed or lost. Make sure you ask for help and engage appropriately skilled incident response resources to deal with it. If you have any concerns, contact your company's incident response team immediately. This group will have the skills and resources that can help you in any kind of cyber incident. So, as has been said in many cases and in many places, if you see something, say something. Report any suspicious activity. In sum, just follow this very simple checklist. Make sure your computer's operating system and antivirus software is patched and up to date. Check your computer prior to bringing it into the customer environment to make sure there is no malware or viruses present on the system. Avoid any use of read-write media, but if you must use them, make sure they've been scanned and are clean of any malware or viruses before bringing them into the customer environment. If you need to connect to the customer's network in order to perform a task, Make sure you have written permission and they understand exactly what actions you plan to take. If connection to the system is going to be done remotely, use secure connections wherever possible. If the system you're maintaining appears to still have default credentials applied, please encourage the customer to change those credentials to reduce the risk of attack. And if you see any anomalies or unusual system behaviors, note them and report them to your management immediately. Following this very simple checklist will dramatically reduce the risk of any kind of incident either occurring at the customer's site or introducing anything back into your company's environment. Thank you for your attention. If you have further questions, contact your management or your company's cybersecurity representative.